Join me as I make two different versions of super simple drawstring bags. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects, and we're continuing the Learn to Sew in 2020 series featuring the entry-level Brother CS7000i sewing machine. In this one, we're focusing on a great project, perfect for the upcoming holidays, reusable drawstring bags. And I'm going to show you how to do two different versions, unlined and lined bags. So this is a little bit easier and it's also a smaller size. I also have two different sizes of the lined bags and be sure to stay tuned to the end because I also have a few kits available if you'd like to make these exact bags. So let's get started with the unlined small version. This is the small unlined drawstring bag. It starts with a five by 12 inch piece of fabric. Because it folds over, I recommend using solids or non-directional prints. The long sides are pink to help prevent fraying by cutting on the bias, as the raw seam will be exposed. I cut the pieces with this rotary cutter with a pinking blade. With a clear roller, mark two lines on each end at a quarter inch and one inch from the edge. Chalk or a disappearing ink pen is best. Fold in at the quarter inch line and press. Recently, I got a Cricut Easy Press Mini and really like it for small items like this. Basting the quarter inch fold with Elmer's washable school glue will keep it in place. Hit it with the dry iron and it's ready to go. Fold in at the inch mark and press, then unfold. Right sides together, fold the fabric in half and line up the ends evenly. Pre-folding the second line will make it easier later on when you create a channel for the drawstring to go through. Secure in place with a few pins. Here are my sewing machine settings on the Brother CS7000i. Lining up the edge of your fabric with the inner metal guide on the included walking foot will produce a scant quarter inch seam. Sew both sides, back stitching at the beginning and end. Brand new to sewing, be sure to watch my basics video about this machine. So now you've sewn a basic pouch, next we're transforming it into a drawstring pouch. Press the seam open a few inches from the top. Refold the section at the original inch mark. The channel itself ends up being three quarters of an inch. Insert a few pins on either side of the seam lines. Gently turn the pouch right side out. Try not to stick yourself though. Using a chopstick or point turner, poke out the two corners with a low amount of pressure. You'll be edge stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the inner fold. Because of its small size, this next part can be a little tricky. Move the needle position to 0.0, .0 farthest left. I switched the stitch length to 3.0. Line up the inner fold on the inner left guide on the walking foot. Every few stitches, shift the pouch so it feeds correctly to sew a straight line. Remove pins once the foot almost reaches that section. Right before and after the seam lines, backstitch to reinforce those areas because soon you'll be picking out a few stitches. Once you've gone all the way around, overlap the stitches a bit so they lock in place. You should now have something that looks like this. With a seam ripper, pick out the stitches on the outside seams between the top and the line you just stitched. You've now created openings to run your drawstrings through. I used half inch twill tape for this example, but if you purchase a kit, it will come with quarter inch twill tape because I found that width to work better for this size. Attach a safety pin to the end of the tape. Insert it into the channel and run through the entire way, coming out the same opening. Try not to get it twisted up inside as you want it to be flat. Leave some slack on both ends of the tape and clip the excess off. Remove the safety pin and with the two tape ends together, tie a knot. Repeat with the second piece of twill tape but start running it through the opposite side. Thank you. 
To get rid of those scraggly ends, cut them evenly. Because cotton twill does fray, I applied a bit of fray check to the ends and let it dry. All finished. Here's a look at the mini drawstring bag. These are so cute and they're perfect for little treats or trinkets. I can't wait to put some stuff inside for the upcoming holidays. And of course you don't have to use this exact same size. You can make these in any dimension you want. I'm gonna put all of mine down below in the description box. And next up, we're going to be making a medium sized line drawstring bag. We're making the medium size, but making the large size is pretty much the same instructions. Start off with the outer and lining fabric pieces measuring eight by 10 inches, half inch twill tape and a safety pin. Place the outer fabric right sides together and pin on three sides, leaving one short side open. Do this with the lining fabric, but mark a section about four inches on one of the short sides. You won't be sewing this part because it will be an opening for turning the project later on. Here are my sewing machine settings. Lining up the edge of your fabric with the inner metal guide on the included walking foot will produce a scant quarter inch seam. Sew both pinned pieces on the three sides, back stitching at all the start and stopping points. Remove the pins before getting to them, don't sew over them. At the corners, stop and lift the presser foot, then pivot 90 degrees, lower the presser foot, and keep sewing. It does take some practice to figure out a stopping point to keep the quarter inch seam allowance on the next side. Make sure not to sew the marked section in the lining. Press the seams open on all sides. Using a seam roll helps if you have one. To make the boxed corners, pinch them together like this. And here's my tip for matching up seam lines. Insert a pin right through the center and align it so it emerges in the center on the other side. Pierce the center closer to the tip, which should hold the placement until it's sewn down. Here's a close-up of what it looks like. A smaller square quilting ruler comes in handy here. Measure out one and a half inches from the tip into the seam line, and eyeball the markings on either side to ensure that they are even from the middle out. Mark a line with the disappearing ink or tailor's chalk. I'll also add more pins to reinforce the corner before sewing. For the large drawstring bag, there is one difference, and that's to measure two inches in from the tip and marking a line. Repeat these steps for all the corners on the outer and lining fabrics. Stitch directly on this line at the sewing machine. Right before you reach the end, leave the needle down. Lift the presser foot, pivot 180 degrees so you should be facing the opposite direction, lower the presser foot, and sew back into the same line to reinforce the stitches. Because you'll likely be putting items into the bag, you do want the seams to be secure. Trim off the excess fabric at the corners, leaving about a quarter inch seam allowance. The lining piece will have an opening in the bottom. Turn the outer piece right side out. Check out how well the seams match up here on the boxed corner. Carefully insert the outer piece into the lining. Right side should be together. First, pin at the side seams and a few more around the perimeter of the top. Once again, here are my sewing machine settings. We're doing a quarter inch seam allowance. From here on out, take off the front part of the machine to reveal the free arm. That's handy for sewing anything in the round, like bags or sleeves. Stitch the entire length and overlap an inch or so at the starting point to lock in place.
through the opening in the lining, gently turn the pouch right side out. It will take some wrangling, but it's cool to see this thing finally start to come together. There will be some wrinkles to smooth out using your hands and an iron. A little steam may help, and it's important to press the top seam well. Press the opening and the lining closed. I typically glue baste it shut until I sew it down permanently. Push the lining into the outer portion, pressing down the top even more. You want this to be as even as possible. Using a ruler and disappearing marking pen, measure and draw lines at 1.5 inches and 2.5 inches in from the edge. For this bag, these lines will create the channel for the string. Sew directly on these lines with a 3.0 stitch length all the way around. Backstitch to reinforce the sections right before and after the side seams. With the seam ripper, carefully pick out the stitches on the outer side seam, only in between the lines you just sewed. Clip off stray thread. You've now created openings to run your drawstrings through. Half inch twill tape works well for these bags. Attach a safety pin to the end of the tape. Insert it into the channel and run through the entire way, coming out that same opening. Try not to get it twisted up inside as you do want it to be flat. Leave some slack on both ends of the tape and clip the excess off. Remove the safety pin and with the two tape ends together, tie a knot. Repeat with the second piece of twill tape but start running it through at the opposite side. That's how you make the bag function with the working drawstring. To get rid of the scraggly ends, cut them evenly. Because cotton twill tends to fray, I applied some fray check to the ends and let it dry. And we're all done! Now you have a well-made, line drawstring bag. Because I didn't use pre-washed fabric, if you do want to launder these bags, I'd advise gently hand washing, then air drying. And yes, for the very first time ever, I have sewing kits available so you can make this project. All of the fabric has already been cut out for you, so you can get right to the fun part, which is, of course, the sewing. These are available in my new Etsy shop. I said I would launch an Etsy shop a long time ago. I finally did it. The link is down below in the description box as well as details on the kits themselves. But each kit you will receive looks just like this, except I have a few different colorways. So the two I have available are this rose and beige fabric. This is a beautiful print and I've had this for a while, really cute. And I have five of these kits available. So each kit comes with enough supplies to make two small unlined drawstring bags 
one medium lined drawstring bag and one large lined drawstring bag. I've included the twill tape. Also, the first few orders I get will have some additional goodies in the kit. I won't spoil the surprise, but I wanted to put some additional goodies in for the first few customers. So if that is you, you can expect some extra things in your package. So it comes with the fabric. Yes, I hand cut all of the fabric myself accurately. So it comes with enough uh, lining and outer fabrics for you to make four bags total. So the outer fabric is the print. The lining fabric for the rose and beige kits are a solid mint green. And the other kit colorway I have available is an assortment. I had a lot of fabric from the Jennifer Sampu Shimmer 2 collection, which is one of my all time favorite fabrics on the planet. And I've made 25 of these kits. I had more of the fabric to go around. This one will have more of an assortment. So no one will be getting the same kit. They'll all be a little bit different. And there are photos of the collection on the Etsy listing. For all of the kits, one of the small online drawstring bag fabrics will be a surprise print. They're all designer quilting cottons and they're some of my favorites. So some of them are holiday themed. And of course, I know you're probably wondering about the price. Each kit is $36, that's US currency. And at this point in time, I am only able to ship to US mailing addresses. So to the international peeps, I'm sorry, but for now, this is just what I have to do to make it financially feasible. Shipping is included though for all those US shipping addresses. So that is a plus. Also keep in mind, unlike other sewing kits, I have done all the prep work for you in terms of the cutting. So that will save you time. It also makes these kits more labor intensive. So I hope you can understand. I wanted to put them at a somewhat affordable price point though. So this is what I've come up with. So yes, they are $36. And again, the information is below in the description box. I had a lot of fun coming up with this concept. Now this does not come with paper instructions because the instructions are this video. So you do need to have internet access for the kits. And I'm also gonna be putting out a video detailing more about my plans with the Etsy shop, with the sewing kits, and also with a Patreon that I've also launched. You'll find links below in the description box for that as well, but I will have more details to come. You know, I, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. I thought this was the perfect project to start with, especially with the holidays coming up. And if you guys like this and want more of the drawstring bag kits, I will certainly be making these available in different fabrics in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them below down in the description box. And if you are new to sewing, consider subscribing to this channel for more beginner friendly tutorials and help videos. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video.